Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I'm going to tell you something that I'm not sure that anyone else has told you before in this digital era of streaming, of social media, of technology, of all of this constant information. They're not going to tell you this. We still live in a physical world. Groundbreaking, I know, but it's true. And that is one of the reasons I started down this process of jot booking and these other analog tools that I've been using and that I will be showing you in the future. But for now, people have been wondering, why have I been talking about sketchbooks? Why have I been talking about drawing? Why have I been talking about painting? Why have I been talking about taking down notes and doing different journaling activities, doing different ways of writing and transcribing and editing in a physical manner? Because we still live in a physical world and there are many reasons why you can benefit. There are many different ways you can benefit and I just want to go over some of them, talk to you about it, show you why on today's episode of Mr. Benj's ADD Experience Live. Some I've been doing for how many weeks now? This is going on my third week doing it straight. So I went from zero podcast to about once every weekday. And I've been sticking to that. And I like what it's, what it's doing. I like where we're going. And I think we've got a lot that we can learn from each other in this kind of format. So I'll be here live on Instagram for a while. I'm archiving all of the posts that you're seeing getting put up here. They'll be going to YouTube and they'll be going to the podcast streams in the meantime. But in the future, you'll be able to go there and we'll start pumping out on YouTube first or maybe some other platform first. But for right now, I like Instagram. I like Instagram live. I like talking to the people. We'll figure out something as we go along. So stay tuned for that. And be sure to subscribe on YouTube or your podcast streams like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever. Stay digital with that part of it because that's the only way you're going to connect with me. I don't know. Maybe I'll put out an album someday. Maybe I'll put out a CD. Maybe I'll go on live tour and start speaking to some of you in person. Maybe we could do that because, yes, we still live in a physical world. So I want to get into that one and let you know why it's so important. So with no delay. I want to start on this by expressing how important I think the physical world is. Many of you know me as a person who jumped into the digital stream, jumped into social media, jumped into computers, technology, and all this stuff very early. I definitely was one of the people that you, a lot of Gen X people you hear are like this, where they came in at an era just when technology was really becoming integrated into the home with televisions, radio. That was just before my time. So we still pretty much ran a physical life, but we had these extra sprinkles of digital technology here and there, but we still had to really deal with the physical world. So over time, I was able to witness the genesis of video games. I was able to witness the beginning of satellite media. I was beginning to, I was there at the beginning when I saw the internet start taking off and network computers. There when websites were first starting to get built. I was around when email was first starting to become a, a thing that regular people could access. Started out in the schools and then went out from there. I was one of the original people who were checking out AOL and instant messenger and bulletin boards. So all these digital tools started coming around when I was actively involved in video gaming, technology, getting into such things as my own website building, my own construction school. I went to school for computer science and engineering, got a master's degree in computer science and a undergraduate degree in information systems. So all this is very familiar to me, but I do have the the interesting point of view where I had to see all of this being developed so I know what the world was like without it and I know what the world is like with it. Many of you listening are probably digital natives where you've only grown up knowing an iPhone. You've never had the really, you never really had a reason to use regular mail on a regular basis. You've never really had the need to use an analog telephone. You know, what, what the hell is a busy signal? It's funny, I watch some of these reaction, reactions on YouTube of people watching movies and they'll see a phone booth and they're like, oh my God, it's a phone booth. I've never actually seen one of those. It's kind of funny to me. It's interesting. And yes, cellular phones as well. I was around when those became a big thing. Cellular phones, satellite phones, now to the smartphones. 
So I'm thankful to have been around to have seen all of that as it came about. And it came about pretty quickly. And I can tell you, there are some certain things that I noticed missing from people that didn't have that. And you, you don't even need to have been around for as long as I have. You just needed to have a way of separating yourself from, from digital media and consuming more of a physical media. This is difficult for a lot of people, so I wanted to address it. And even if you were big on physical media and you've somehow delved headfirst into digital media only, there are benefits to going physical with a lot of things. And one of the most important reasons is we live in a physical world. No matter how much people want to put it out to you that we're all digital, we're everything's computerized, we're just bits floating around. We still live in a physical world. You have to get up in a real bed. You have to go eat real food. You have to talk to real people at some level. You may talk to them through a digital device, but you still have to talk to real people. When you get a headache, that's still a real pain. When you go outside to get in your car, that's a real trip you have to take. To fly to another location, if you're not on Zoom or Zoho or team meeting or whatever, you still have to actually get in the car, drive to the airport, fly to another location, wait in a physical building. And if anything, if we've learned anything from the past, what, decade? Is when we see these systems start to fail, people really have issues. There was a situation in California where a lot of the power was going out in spotty areas here and there. They called them brownouts, not full blackouts, but brownouts where people were losing their power. People didn't know how to deal with, hey, all of a sudden my internet's down. What do I do? Hey, all of a sudden my, my television won't work. What do I do? I don't know how to entertain myself without digital media. I don't know how to play games. I don't know how to have a conversation. I don't know how to roll dice. I don't know how to build a physical board game if I needed to. It's funny, when I was younger, I remember the power went out once and we broke out video, I mean, broke out board games. And that's how, that's one of the things that happened when you were, when I was younger, you broke out board games, you broke out the cards. And maybe it wasn't even a need to break out the board games just because the power went out. Maybe you just wanted to get away. In fact, our parents used to kick us out of the house. They'd say, you need to get fresh air. You need to get movement. You need to get going. You need to embrace the real world. And we've kind of, I don't want to say we've lost it, but it's a lot less important now. And a lot of the problems that we're facing today can be fixed by reattaching ourselves to the physical world and enjoying this real life experience that we're having. It's a beautiful thing. Don't, don't, get, don't get it twisted. As much as I'm all about the computers and technology, the physical world is a beautiful thing. I think back to the times when my, my dad, he used to bring us outside. He would take us different places and would just kind of let us roam. At first, it was boring because I'm thinking I want to watch TV. I want to play board games. I want to get on my Nintendo. I want to play... Genesis. I want to get on the phone. I want to read a book. I, I didn't want to deal with the physical world, but he would make us go outside. And after a moment, something would happen. Maybe my brother would say, hey, come look at this frog. I'd go look at the frog. It's like, oh, look at it. And it's a real thing. It's, you have to deal with it right there. Or my sister was, she liked to bike ride. She would say, hey, let's go bike riding. And we take a bike ride through the neighborhood and find a new pathway or a new route to take. And these interactions, these situations fundamentally changed me because it wasn't just information. It wasn't just bits on a screen. It wasn't just an image. It was tangible. So all of my senses from my sight, hearing, touch, the tastes of things, Actually, we did taste plants. That was kind of a thing that you don't really do too much now, but you see a, a, a fruit plant or some kind of plant. So there were things you just tasted. So the world was much more 
tangible to us. And I think that feeling is missing from a lot of people. And it's a little too intense for people too. But what does that all what does that all mean? I mean, why how can I how can I make this a bit more concrete? You're thinking, how can I do I just need to go outside? Do I just need to well, before we get to that, I'd like to give you some reasons that you may not be considering. Some concrete reasons. I'll give you four of them in terms of getting getting in touch with your physical world and why you might need to do that. Number one, on a spiritual level, you need to separate yourself from the matrix. You need to realize that you're trapped in a construct, this digital world, this metaverse in the proper sense, not like a virtual reality, but a universe on top of the one we already have. You're in this metaverse where things aren't tangible. You're not touching anything. You're just moving information and ideas around. And that's fine. That's that's one aspect of things. But to truly bring your spirituality into focus, you need to bring all of your facilities in bring all of your facilities in in that realm, in that physical realm. And you just don't get that from a virtual sensation. You just don't get that from a manufactured, digitized simulation of things. Are we living in a simulation right now? That's another question you can ask yourself later. We'll get into that at some point. But separating yourself from the matrix, I think, can really only be done by physically separating yourself from things. This includes having times where you put your phone down. This includes times where you turn your notifications off. This includes times where you don't check your email. This includes times where you, instead of FaceTiming someone or instead of sending a message, actually call them, talk one-on-one right there, or actually get up out of your, your seat, walk to the store instead of ordering something on Amazon or maybe driving down to the mall and actually walking through the storefronts to actually see the products you're talking about. Because I don't know if you've ever tried ordering stuff from Amazon or any online retailer where you'll find something like a paper, you'll find a notebook or something. And as far as you can tell, the notebooks are the same online. They're pretty. The paper is pretty much just a picture of paper, if you're even using paper, right? But when you go through a store and you can actually see the different luminosity, the different luminous ratings, what is it called? Luminosity rating? The luminosity ratings on the paper where you can actually feel the grade where the, and if it's a linen based or cotton based paper, or maybe it's some type of blend that includes synthetics where it's more like a plasticky type of paper. That's stuff you have to get by actually going and touching it. And there's still a premium on that. Will we lose that? Maybe. I don't know. Probably to some extent. But for you to separate yourself from the matrix a little bit, to separate yourself from this construct, to detox from all of that, I do think it's important to step outside of that intention and know when you're doing it. A lot of you probably don't know that you're doing it. You're It's just how things are. Try something different, not to be old fashioned, but to actually see if there's a more intense physical situation that you could involve yourself in. Number two, another reason to step into the physical world and try to attach to a little more is for social reasons. It's interesting now, we're coming to an era where we can, where we understand how to talk to people, we understand how to message people, we understand how to communicate in all of these digital ways, but how do we do that in real life? Have we actually practiced talking to people with a voice, a voice that you hear right then and there, not FaceTime, like an actual human voice, face to face? It's an interesting experience if you've been locked away for a while and you need to come out and actually talk to somebody. 
it may be uncomfortable in a lot of situations, but you can get a lot of things done faster. You can communicate a lot more. You can see the body language. You can feel that person's presence in front of you. So there's a very big social aspect to stepping outside of these tools and these digital experiences that we've been inundated with and that we've let ourselves be trapped by in a certain extent. And it's not just about learning about others, but we learn more about ourselves too in relation to others. Because online, we may both just be profiles. We may both just be interactive pages on Facebook or Twitter or wherever. But actually sitting down and being able to talk to somebody, actually meeting somebody face to face, it's a much different experience. And you'll see a lot of companies, they won't hire you unless they've actually physically met you. They may have gone through all of the processes and they'll say, you know what? We think this is a good fit. We're going to fly you out to our company. We're going to talk to you for about 30 minutes and then we're going to fly you right back. And it's just that simple. And you think to yourself, that seems like a waste to, to do all of that work. What are you missing in the digital experience that you're going to get in the physical world? And a lot of times it's a very social aspect and you can't put your finger on it exactly but it's still another reason to understand that we live in a physical world. Third way living in a physical world is, is represented, is necessary. It is to keep your mind clear and keep your mind focused. In other words, cut out distractions. There's something about these, these digital experiences, these novel ways of interacting, these constructs through our phones, computers, televisions, etc. These constructs aren't, I don't want to say they aren't good for us, but they push our minds around in certain ways. And we often don't have time to let our minds gel on their own and figure out their own way of being. We're always being told to do something. In fact, I was and people will fight you about this because I was I was actually in a situation talking to some friends. We were standing around going over the day's events, just talking in person. And someone said, I sent you a message. Didn't you get it? And I said, I have my notifications turned off at the moment. This person got me like like upset with me. Almost mad. They started going in on me about how do you not have your notifications on? What if somebody important calls? What if something happens? What if I need to get in contact with you? How would you know? And what if we were trying to find and just on and on? And it was a long series of very unlikely probability, unlikely chances of happening events. There was a low probability for all of this and stuff nobody really cared about. If you check your phone, once an hour, you're only going to check your phone maybe 16 times a day if you check it once an hour, supposing you sleep the other eight hours. If you only check it for 16 hours a day, once every 16 hours, that's only 16 times you pick up your phone. There was a report, I believe, forgot who did the report, but they said we pick up and check our phones like up to 2,000 times a day. That's crazy. That means it's almost on automatic where you're just reflexively looking at your phone, whether you, you may call yourself checking the time, but you're really checking your notifications. Oh, you're checking to see the weather. You're checking to see who called. You're checking to see if your post got more likes. You're checking to see who responded to your messages. I don't think all of us are at the 2000 checks level, but think about every time you pick up your phone, every time you touch it, every time you look down, every time you hear a little buzz, Oh my gosh. And the notification buzz, I definitely turn that off. Even if I have a visual look, I de definitely turn off the buzz notification or the ding. I don't want to hear it. I will check my phone at my convenience. Once every 15 minutes at the most, once every hour is pretty good. And you will do that and you will become such, so, so much more clear of mind. You won't believe it. 
at first it'll seem awkward and then you'll start checking your phone for no reason. Like maybe I missed and it, and that's just a reflex, but you'll get used to it. You'll feel better about yourself. You'll start appreciating where you are and literally stop worrying about what people think about you. And if they think highly of you, you expect they'll like your post. And, but that's all caring about what people think about you or fear of missing out. And you're caught in this psychological trap that casinos, marketers, salesmen, and all of these corporations have built into these systems for the express purpose of getting your attention and holding on to it. Putting your phone down, and there are many tools for that. I could do a whole podcast on keeping away from distractions, but I won't get into all of that now. What I'm saying is, by doing that, by getting rid of those distractions and focusing and putting your phone down and staying off the digital, that puts you in more of a mode to connect with the real world. Your mind starts seeing different things. Your thoughts start becoming more clear. Your ideas become a little more grounded. Everything that you do and everything that you think becomes just a little more tangible, concrete, and lovely because it's real. It's not as attached to the digital. It's real. Now, of course, you see some. In fact, you may even see something nice. And I'm not saying throw away your phone, obviously, because I'm using it right now. I'm saying use it and don't have it use you. If you can get that difference, your mind will be so much more in control of, of things, in control of your life, in control of your actions, behaviors, in control of your thoughts. A lot of people say, I can't help how I think. I can't help. Yes, you can. Start with controlling how much time you use your phone. And then when you have that time free in your mind, when you have that space to think and experience in your mind, you can start looking at the world in a completely different way. Maybe you'll start seeing flowers and like, you know what? That real world thing, I saw a flower, I took a picture of it. That real world thing is my notification to use my digital. My digital is not a notification for me to do something. My real world is a notification for me. If I'm slightly hungry or I feel like sleeping or whatever, these are the things that I want to move me. I don't want this digital system pushing me around. I'll still use my reminders. I'll still use my calendar app. I'll still use all these other things. But I want my real world to notify me of what's happening. I want my body, my mind, my soul, my spirit, and my friends to notify me. Not a phone. Not a computer. I want to be that in touch with the world where my mentality is on point in a physical sense. And finally, fourth one is fourth reason to start stepping away and getting more in touch with the physical world and realizing what, what's going on here is to exercise consciousness. Now, this one's a. Uh, I shouldn't say exercise consciousness because that makes it sound like we're talking about the spiritual realm again. Maybe I should say to engage more deeply. Do you want, if we're living in a physical world and we start using these devices to literally escape, if you look up the term escapism and studies on escapism in video games and digital media, television shows, these are all ways to escape, to get away from the real world instead of engaging with it. To a certain point, that's fine. But when you start getting to a point where you can't deal with the real world, you may have an issue. You may have a problem. And I think that needs addressing or at least looking into. Engaging more deeply in the physical sense is something that's achieved when you've looked at the other three, when you've gotten your social connections together, when you've gotten your spiritual connections together, when you've got your mental connections together. Then what, what happens is the physical starts to take on a different vibe and all of these pieces start to kind of work together a little better. When you go out to eat, you're not as concerned 
with taking a picture and posting it to Instagram. You might still do that, but you're not as concerned. You're hearing the, you're, you're engaging more deeply on the physical sense. You're hearing the restaurant around you. You're seeing and feeling the steam from the food rise up. That person who gave, who brought your food out has a certain way about the restaurant people that work there. You start to get their personality and their personality starts to match up with the food that you're eating. Maybe it's a, a restaurant of a certain type of ethnicity and you start understanding that culture a little better through the food and through the interactions and through this physical thing. You start seeing the different decorations in the place around you. You start noticing slight differentiations in how they speak and how they talk versus how you talk. You start noticing different smells. Your senses, your, your live senses start to become a little more sharper. And everything starts to feel better. Because no matter what people tell you, you will feel a lot better just on, on fact by engaging in the physical world more and more. Engaging in the digital world is far too... There, there aren't enough dimensions there to engage you properly. You need the physical world to engage properly. You need hugs. You need push-ups. You need cold and hot weather. You need a comfortable pair of pajamas. You need good food. You need to talk to people. You need to hear nice music. And you need to hear a, a, an actual symphony. You need to hear a concert. You need to hear someone's actual voice on stage. These things will change you for the better. So along in this job booking process that I've been talking about, it's physical. And I wanted to just get into a little of the reason why the physical world still matters. And yes, I want to explain a little bit about why this physical world that we live in is still, it still matters. We've, we've gotten so much technology in such a short amount of time that it's hard to understand what we've missed and what we've, what we've let ourselves become detached from. So that's why I've been taking this little journey into getting more in touch with the physical world. And I think it's worth it for a lot of people. In fact, there was a recent study on, there was a recent study on people who were exercising and, hey, what's up, what's up? Soldier 9358. I don't know what the 9358 is about, but I suppose it's a very meaningful number. Glad to have you. So getting together with the, getting back in touch with the real world was a journey for me. And I wanted to explore a little more. Oh, the example I was saying. Yeah, the, so there was a, there was a study done saying that between all the data analysis, the psychological profiling of, of, and these were students, the data analysis of students, the psycho, psycho, logical analysis of these students, the profiling, the getting students to learn certain things and having them think a certain way and feeding them certain information and tool. All of this was well and good. And they're doing all this tracking and doing all this number crunching and talking and showing them pictures and saying, hey, all of this is awesome. But all of that was all of that ended up paling in comparison to the benefits from simply forcing these kids to do physical activities, getting out and exercising, going to a, a farm and doing farm activities, having them play physical sports. All of these things that you do in the physical world just blew past all of these other issues that we were seeing and trying to address only in digital means. And by digital means, I also mean just talking or non-physical. And I'll have to find that study because it was, it was actually pretty, pretty interesting. But, and do not take this as medical advice at all, but people were, they were looking at numbers dealing with depression, dealing with anxiety, dealing with social woes dealing with problems, being unable to talk with and deal with people, dealing with 
um, what is it called? It's when your mind starts to lapse and go different places when you start to get very sporadic thoughts and you can't concentrate. Not ADHD or not ADD. There's another word I'm looking for. But there were all these conditions and they couldn't find out one thing to really fix it. And of course, somebody comes up and says, yeah, get these kids doing something. So when I was coming up in school in Florida, mind you, when I was coming up in school in Florida, they forced you to do physical things. They're like, yeah, you're going to have you're going to have recess and you're going to have P.E., physical education, which are two separate things. And they had both of them. Aside from that, they also highly, highly encourage you to have some sort of physical program, whether that was be in the band, be in the football team, be do something with the newspaper squad. The newspaper squad had to put up flyers and they had to do arts and crafts all the time. So they were, it was actually physical too. But they had all these programs where people had to actually do stuff. And it was very, I didn't think it was weird at the time, but thinking back to the school, like they engaged us in a lot of different programs and activities. Once middle school hit, then you didn't have to do the program. Then you could start going to other things. It's happened to BDOT. But when I was younger, yeah, they made us go to recess and they made us go to PE. And that study just made me think back to this time where you had to do these things. I talk to people now and having recess and physical education as two separate programs that you had to engage in. That's just a foreign concept to a lot of people. So now I'm actually wondering where are people getting there? Where are people having a physical recess? Recess is about having time away to do a physical activity to kind of play around and do your own thing. Is that concept even around still? Do people say, you know what? You've been cooped up too long. You need to actually relax yourself and get away from all of that by doing something physical. I don't even know anymore. I got to talk to more parents and teachers about this. That's interesting. But yeah, if anybody has any experiences or firsthand knowledge or thoughts of how the physical world is missing out of their lives or, and it's hard to inject it back in, I definitely like to hear about these things. Because as I said, I, as a kid, I was trying my hardest to get away from physical activities. I was trying my hardest to stay in front of a computer. I wanted to hold on to that Game Boy Advance as long as I could and never speak to anybody in real life as much as possible. I only wanted to email people. It was a weird time in my life. But then I started to understand the joy of, I think it was at, I think it was when I was at Rockstar. Because one thing about Rockstar Games is the studio that I was at in San Diego, they had a, we had to talk to a lot of people. So one of the things they liked instituting was this, hey, you start working on something. The plan is laid out, but there's a lot of room for working things out interpersonally. So one of the things that they would do and they encouraged and they actually promoted and expected you to do was go around and talk to people. So you couldn't just send an email. I mean, you could, but the idea was that you don't just send an email. You send an email, then you go get up and talk to the person about that email. You don't just put something in the bug database. You enter it into the bug database. And then when you have a time, maybe five, 15 minutes later, you go over to that person and say, hey, listen, I sent you this bug. It's about this and about this. And it became a culture where all of these digital interactions were backed up by physical interactions. I started going out to lunch with different people I had never met before. I started going on activities with people I'd never met before. That was a big thing. And a lot of our meetings were very small, one, two, three person meetings. And we would get up and literally walk through the office part on a talking meeting. So during those walking moments, you weren't, didn't have access to your phone. You didn't have access to your computer. You just did these little walk and talk meetings. And I think somewhere after that, I totally didn't consciously think about this until just now. 
shortly after that, I started really getting more involved with, hey, maybe I should go to the gym more often. Maybe I should do this more. Maybe I should be a little more physical. And it was intentional on Rockstar's part, but I didn't really catch it. I didn't really catch how beautiful it was. And to illustrate that point, people wonder where Rockstar gets their authenticity from, where they get that touchy-feely vibe, where you have that kind of connection to the gamers. It's because it's ingrained in the process. If you were going to work on the horse physics, or if you were going to work on the horseback riding in Red Dead Redemption, chances are they would have taken you out to one of the farms and you would have a field trip and you'd meet with some horses, you'd ride the horses, talk to horse riders. It was literally like that. A lot of companies don't do that type of physical interaction. But it makes for a much richer experience. I know people on the Midnight Club team who actually drove up to L.A., got involved in some street racing, were able to take photos of cars that had been modded out. And next thing you know, Dub Edition is one of the most authentic feeling. I mean, it's not like an authentic racing game, you know what I mean? But there was an authentic feel of, yes, this has a certain reality to it. This has a certain tangible nature to it. Something about this is more real than the other stuff out there. And that's because of this tangible nature of things. So yeah, I always, I'm definitely been getting back to that phase of my life where I've grasped and held on to the things in the physical world. So Over the next couple weeks, maybe months, I'll definitely be getting more into the physical side of things, showing you some of the physical tools that I use, showing how you can be a digital native as well as a physical savant in a way where you can really start bouncing those two back and forth. It's something I don't think has been really well explored. And with the speed of technology, especially with AI around the corner, AI is massive infiltration around the corner. I mean, right now it's still more of a novelty than anything else. Still in use, but it's on the cusp. Point being, I think there's a lot to be explored here and a lot to be gained from being in touch with the physical world. And that's pretty much it, man. As I said, technology is moving quickly. We're getting down to, what did they say? That all the data that we've created in the past two years is more than all the data that we've created in the entire history of humanity that we've saved and stored and all the books on paper and everything else, the amount of data that we've created in the past two years dwarfs all that. Soldier 9358 said it hasn't been explored at all. Yeah, I I figure somebody's out there in some Kansas City design institute they may be looking at stuff like this a little bit but yeah it's really hasn't hit the it really hasn't hit the culture just yet it hasn't hit the people i know a lot of people are talking about getting back to reality i think there's some movements like that a lot of that seems very i don't want to say hippie shout out to samurai hippie who was on here last night but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a weird vibe, man. I think we should all do a little more just to get in touch with our physical worlds. In fact, I'm going to be doing that right now, getting back to some physical things. Been doing more, more workouts, been doing more, trying to get away from the process world, not just digital, but process and seeing how, they, how that do, does for me. And I've been doing great. And I hope you do great as well. And question, won't automation need human beings, though, for those jobs? Not necessarily. One thing that separates this revolution that we're going into from the previous revolutions is, and I mean, you're talking about the major leaps forward. Uh, Printing press got information all around. The internet age had people were able to connect with computers. The computer age where people were Everybody all of a sudden had a computer, the smartphone age, if you want to call that an age, the industrial age, the aviation age, all of these different eras where new technology came about. It is true. We were able to, as people, get up, 
move around to different jobs and do other things physically. The difference here, and we've got two competing technologies or not competing, two correlated technologies moving forward at the same time, which is robotics and general purpose robotics and general purpose artificial intelligence. Meaning you have these systems now that can move forward, not necessarily needing a human to be a part of that loop. Once you have a development loop that can exist on its own and grow by itself, then you're in a completely different ball game. Like when we went from horse and carriage to car, horse and buggy going to the car, it was like, well, you had farmers, you had people taking care of horses, you had this whole buggy manufacturing and they would cut down the lumber for the trees. There was a whole ecosystem there. When that moved into cars, all those people stopped making buggies, stopped horse farming as much. They stopped doing as much physical labor for horses and they just moved that over to cars. And that, that kind of makes sense. It's like, okay, there's still a car industry. Maybe I'm not building horse whips or maybe I'm not building the reins and the bits for the horses anymore. Maybe I'm all of a sudden the sales manager. Maybe I'm selling cars. Maybe I'm at a car dealership. Maybe I'm selling glass to the dealership, right? Whatever. There was still a physical thing that was going on. Now, our technology is moving from just one thought-based area to another thought-based area that effectively doesn't need us as much. And when you start getting into, when the ecosystem moves into the digital area, then suddenly it's like, well, what's the difference between one folder that has a bunch of information and another folder? Well, you just kind of copy it over and there's not much of a physical need. So automation, you start getting robots doing things. You start getting computers figuring out things, automating all these processes. I believe this is a fundamental shift in how we have embraced technology in the past. And I think that we're going to need to adapt in a way that starts to actually let go of a lot of these ideas, these processes, and these ways of doing things that we have in the past. For example, maybe we don't need to, I mean, there's the dystopian way and the utopian way. I'm going to talk about the utopian way because we've all seen movies where the dystopian way happened and a Skynet and people, people hobbling through these apocalyptic streets just with nothing to do. If you look at the utopian version, maybe we've got nothing better to do than go hug our kids and go play with dogs in the field and just check to make sure the the moisture evaporator is working properly and we don't actually do as much. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I think we can get to a point where we start using a lot of our work to guide these machines, to guide these processes, to help us all live better. Because if you're watching this on Instagram and you're in America, North America, then you're doing much better off than a lot of people around the world. And people in America, I know we get a little separated, but we're only 4% of the population, right? So we've still got work to do in making these things better and propagating progress and technology throughout the world. So there's still a lot of work to be done. And there's still a lot of things that can happen. But, you know, ultimately in that utopian future, I think the automation and the, uh, and the jobs, a lot of them aren't as necessary. Maybe my job just becomes a branding job where I become an ambassador for the technology, where the technology is actually in control, quote unquote control. So if you don't believe that's, God, who said it? Was it Noam Chomsky? Somebody made the quote that human beings are the sex organs of corporations. That blew my mind. I was thinking, wow, you start thinking of a corporation as a person and more business gets created when people do deals and capitalism requires this communication between people and 
Oh, that was a weird thought. So yeah, but at some point, maybe we just become facilitators of all these mechanisms and automation processes that are going on in order to make the world that we want. So yeah, there should be more movements for the physical. Yeah, definitely. And maybe we can get back to that. I hope that we can get back to a more, on a human level, I hope that we can get to a more physical place once we've gotten a lot of these automation and AI, robotic automation and intelligent computer system automations, once those are more in place, then I think that we can get back to a more physical situation where where it's not so much about, do I need to check my notifications? I'm like, oh my God, I have to get to work. And oh my God, this this thing is happening. And oh my God, someone on the news did this. It's like, hey, this weekend we're going down to whatever state, whatever country, and we're all going to talk to the people down there physically. We're all going to meet with them. They're going to get introduced to things. And of course, I'm in the side of my head, I'm always thinking about the weird version of that. And of course, some weird movie comes up where these people come in and just tell everybody how to live. And that's not what I'm getting at. But those thoughts are in parallel because with any kind of futurism talk, there's the utopian and the dystopian. And they're both yin yang mixed in with each other. So it all gets weird. But yeah, I'm a pro technology advocate. I am about embracing new ways of doing things. But in the end, it's all about living in as living as well as you can in this physical world that has been granted to us. And I'm grateful for it. And I love it. I love it all. So that's going to be it for me today. I uh, ran a little longer than I usually do. But thank you all for joining. Follow along on on all the socials if you want. Definitely check out my podcast proper that I put out on the podcast streams on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just now starting to really get the flow of moving these podcasts onto those platforms. And also I'm on YouTube as well. So I'm going to get all these things working and flowing. And thank you all for being with me. Appreciate it. I will see you later. Wait, I got a question. What does WHA mean? I can't just leave with the WHA on the, on the comments here. Oh, all right. Nothing after the WHA then. All right, well, peace. If you ever have, and you ever have a message to send me, just go ahead and pop it in the comments or pop it somewhere else, and we'll get to it later. I may come back and do a Q&A on a Saturday or I mean a Friday or something like that. Take care.